What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. This is a slightly different setup than obviously I was using before because I was just like filming on my iPhone walking around the apartment before. But since I moved into a new apartment, I thought I would try to experiment with setups in different parts of the apartment because now this is like, now I live in an apartment that's like big enough to have more than just a desk setup. The past few months when I was in Hong Kong and I was leaving, I was living in a hotel right before I was leaving and it was just a basic hotel room so I could only film at the desk because that was like the size of a Hong Kong hotel room. But now I can film in different parts of my space and I'm so thankful and happy for that. This has been one of the greatest contributors to my improved mental health over the past few weeks. Just having a lot more personal space to kind of like fill with my stuff, but also spread out and feel like like I can move around and I, it's, it's just, it's just like having more freedom in my own life, which is so nice. Today I decided to film on my DSLR, which has literally not been out of its case in two years. And I had to charge all the batteries last night. I had to do all the settings all over again, but hopefully it looks okay. I remember buying this years ago and thinking like, this is it, I'm gonna use this all the time, it's gonna change everything for me. I I do love it. I do think, I you can tell me, I think that the picture quality is way better than the iPhone or the G7X. Definitely the G7X Mark III has some issues with focusing and lighting that I have not been able to solve with software updates. I'll leave that to the tech pros. But this camera, which is the Canon 6D Mark II that I bought probably two and a half, three years ago at this point, it was great right out of the box, so God willing, like everything is okay in this video. Hopefully the sound is also a little bit better. I realized that the sound in this apartment, because it has wood floors and I don't have a bunch of stuff in it, it is a little bit echoey, so I put a microphone on this camera and hopefully it's a little bit better. It is New Year's Eve here in England and it'll be New Year's Eve pretty soon in New York and in parts of the US and I thought I would jump on here and do a little, not really New Year's resolutions, chat but kind of for as long as i can remember usually in school from childhood we would write new year's resolutions now i know myself and i know that i have never kept a new year's resolution in my entire life in fact for the past 10 years i think my new year's resolutions have been the same every single year one get healthier slash lose weight to learn to drive. Fun fact, I am 43 years old and I have never turned on the ignition in a car or driven a car. And every year, probably since I was 30, I've said to myself, this is the year. This is the year I'm gonna learn to drive. And I still haven't. So it's on my list again. And for many, many, many years, one of my top resolutions has been to find a way to move to England permanently. Well, in 2020, I finally achieved moving back to England permanently, although the permanently still remains TBD. But for me in 2021, after this wild and crazy, yet somehow incredibly boring year that was 2020, my New Year's resolutions, or I don't want to call them resolutions, the mindset I want to take with me into 2021 is something that I have been working on for the past year and a half. After 43 trips around the sun and a very introspectively difficult year and a half, I want to go into 2021 with a sense of intention. And that is the word that I've been saying to myself a lot over the past few weeks. A few weeks ago, I started working with a new trainer in Hong Kong, right before I left Hong Kong, about a month before I left. 
and she's fantastic. Her name is Nicole Wong. If you want to follow her, I'll list her Instagram down below. In one of our first sessions, she talked to me a lot about my dietary habits and how when I had started my weight loss journey back in the middle of 2019, I had been put on a pretty strict set of macros and she suggested to me, or she said to me that the smarter way for me to approach long-term weight loss and fat loss and health and fitness would be to try to loosen that up a little bit. I had been on a pretty low calorie diet over the course of an entire year plus. And while I didn't always stick to the diet, for me, those macros from when I had first started losing weight were so important because it set up parameters that I could work within or just beyond, but I always knew where I had to go back to. When Nicole and I were talking about this, I remember saying to her, and she looked at me with like this wild look on her face, like, what are you talking about? But when she said to me, if you want a cookie, eat a cookie. If you want some Doritos, eat some Doritos. Just don't go ham and eat 12 bags of Doritos or the entire package of cookies. And what I said to her was, I can't do that. I said to her, and this is kind of true, and I don't know if any of you, any of you feel this way, if I open a bag of Doritos and I eat one Dorito, it's like I black out. And that's what I said to her. I was like, Nicole, I can't do that because it's like I black out when I start eating junk food. And this doesn't just go for junk food. This goes for delicious foods I love, like pasta and french fries and just any anything delicious. And the problem is not the food. I don't think, I, I don't really believe in moralizing food. I don't think the food is good or bad. I think that food is food and if you count the nutritional value of it and you can work it into your diet, it's everything in moderation. That is what I conscientiously believe. But in practice, I black out when I start eating delicious things. What I wanna do in 2021 is change this approach I have that doesn't just apply to food. It applies to so many things. It applies to everything from snacks to work to drinking things and not just booze, but when my trainer told me a few months ago that I should be drinking four liters of water a day, which is about a gallon, I have drank over a gallon of water every single day for at least the past six months because I can't do anything halfway. I do everything until there's like nothing left to do. And what I would like to see myself do and what my trainer Nicole suggested I do is to shift my mindset. She said to me, as soon as I told her that I black out every time I start eating snacks and that I can't stop, she said that framing those ideas to myself in those ways, saying I can't and that I black out when I start eating Doritos, is changing that framing is the first step to changing my consciousness and altering my behavior for healthier behaviors. So what I wanna do in 2021, especially because even though the vaccine is starting to roll out, I suspect that most of the world will live under these semi-lockdown slash lockdown slash limited movement, just restricted conditions for the foreseeable next six to eight months. I want to approach the first half of 2021 for myself with intention and You've heard me say over and over again in my videos about the idea of setting myself up for success in my day by doing a home workout in the morning, even though I don't want to, and I don't like home workouts. I find them to be like, I'm like, I feel weird working out on my carpet with my yoga mat and like my sliding pads and my bands alone. It feels weird to me. I don't know why there's no reason it should feel weird, but even though I don't feel like doing it, I know that doing it, which only takes like 45 minutes to an hour, if I do it correctly and with intention and planned out and conscientiously, 
but that sets me up to feel great the rest of the day because my serotonin levels are up. I'm just, I just feel like I've done something. My body feels better. My body feels more aligned. My like muscles feel like they like did something today. That to my last video, you saw me go through my fridge and my cupboards. I do have like junky things in there like biscuits and cookies that I stress bought and I will sometimes just like pick up a bag of candy at the checkout counter without even really thinking about it. But by and large, I have tried to set myself up for success with intention in terms of stocking my fridge and cupboards. But I want that idea to extend through all of my life. Over the past week, for example, over the past two weeks, I've noticed, I have been here in England for exactly two weeks today. And I've noticed that the time has gone by so quickly because I'm living this sort of unstructured daily routine. It's not even a routine. Well, it's sort of a routine. I find myself doing certain things in a routine way. For example, in the morning, I get up, I make my bed, I open the windows to air out the apartment. I do any dishes in case there were some dishes left over from the night before. I take out the garbage. Sometimes I'll vacuum in the morning and I just try to set up the apartment in the morning just to like give it a little zhuzh. So I'm setting myself up for the rest of the day. So my apartment is like done for the day. So I don't stop in the middle of the day to like, oh, I need to vacuum. So I'm gonna procrastinate this work that I have to do and go vacuum. But beyond that, and maybe working out in the morning, I really have let the time slip by. I am always surprised every single day when the sun sets around 4, 4.30 here in England. And I don't like that feeling. I don't like the feeling that my time is slipping away. I don't like this countdown until work starts again in January. I don't like this feeling of worrying about like what I'm gonna do next year because I've only signed a one year lease here and whether I, I will be staying in England or whether I'll be going to New York or going back to Asia. It's really important for me to switch my mindset this year to a mindset of intention. And I've started to say this to myself the first step, I think, is my whole life, I was born here in Oxford in England and I lived here until I was five and I came back here for grad school. And my whole life, I've wanted to have a home here. I've always actually wanted to be bi-coastal New York, England. And part of that is having a home here. I have an apartment in New York. So one of the things I've been saying to myself over the past few days as a reminder is that I'm in my 40s now and I am allowed to decide where I want to set up a home. And that is something that I've been giving a lot of thought to over the past few months. I think most of my friends are married and they have kids. And so that creates a sense of permanence and a sense of you have to settle down because your kids have to have some sort of stability or they have to be enrolled in school. So you can't just pick up and leave. And I love the freedom of being able to go anywhere and I don't have kids and I am not married. And so I don't have like a tether anywhere. So I love that, but I also crave anchors. And for me, New York will always be an anchor. My family's in New York, my apartment's in New York, most of my stuff is in New York. And I miss New York and I will always go back to New York. But I have always wanted a second anchor here in England. And so I am going to approach this move that I've made, which, Deep down inside, when I made this decision to move to England from Hong Kong, I was like, I'm just gonna go live in England for a year. But I should have done it with more intention. And I'm going to shift that mindset to this is my first step 
to doing the thing that I've always wanted to do, which is to set up some kind of home base here in England for myself. So that's an example of doing something with intention. But these lockdowns that we are all going through all over the world, I don't know if you feel this way too, but I, I keep on going back to that feeling of, I can't believe another day has gone by. And 2020, it feels like it's, like it feels like January, February, March, 2020, it feels like it was just yesterday. And now it's December 31st, 2020. It's the year that never was. And I don't want 2021 to go by that way too. So that is my New Year's resolution for myself in 2021 is to do things with intention and make decisions with intention and not let the time just slip by because we all know that time is the most precious and most valuable thing that we have. It's non-negotiable. It's the great equalizer. It's the thing that you can't ever get back. I just want to be able to use it wisely in 2021. So that's my resolution. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know in the comments below what you have been thinking about during this lockdown, during the end of year. It's such a hard time for so many people in a normal year. It's a hard time. It's an emotional time. It's 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 one of the most challenging times for mental health in the entire year. And this year, I can't even imagine what a lot of people are going through. So I hope you're doing great. I hope you're staying safe and healthy wherever you are. Let's hope that 2021 brings so much more optimism and happiness. And I'm hoping that in six to eight months, we'll start as like a world, as a global community to climb out of this situation that we're in. But until then, I hope you have a very, very happy new year and I will see you in 2021.